Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Paranormal News. Tonight's article comes from the New York Times. It is nytimes.com, and the headline is An Ancient Hill and Forgotten Dead, Afghanistan's Haunted Outpost. Its name was Observation Post Rock. The outpost is the backdrop for a ghost story and is known for strange voices, radio static, and the creeping fear of being watched. It was written by Thomas Gibbons Neff and Taimur Shah, and it was published October 31st, 2020, and updated on November 12th, 2020. Kabul, Afghanistan. It seemed the perfect vantage point for the Marines. A 30-foot-high dirt pile overlooking the low-lying poppy fields of Helmand Province. What they could not explain were the strange lights at night the whispers in the darkness, the mysterious radio static, the sudden chill in a summer breeze, and the recurring whiff of corpses. Only later did the Marines and British soldiers stationed there begin to understand the place they called Observation Post Rock. The post and its surrounding area were considered cursed by residents of the Amir Aga villages an area where the Taliban insurgents now reside, following the failed campaigns of the American, Afghan, Soviet, and British militaries there. The vacated outpost has cemented itself in both American and local Afghan culture as part of a legend, a peculiar intersection of history, spiritualism, and the paranormal. It is the backdrop for a ghost story built along the spine of Afghanistan's unending wars and its countless dead. The Taliban roam freely now among the clusters of small villages and poppy fields in Helmand's Garzmir district, all irrigated by a canal system built during the Cold War and funded by the United States. It was different 12 years ago, when the Marines deployed in Garzmir to help drive the Taliban out the dominant height of what the Marines described as a hardened dirt pile offered the best position for an outpost to see their enemy. Corporal Andrew Rouser, one of the first Marines assigned to the outpost, simply called it the Rock. But before the Marines destroyed what they believed to be a Taliban defensive position on the mound with a demolition charge, Lance Corporal Brendan Kelly discovered evidence of the hill's ancient design. Small tunnels dug into its base that led to a single chamber, maybe a fort or tomb. It was creepy, Corporal Kelly recalled. The blast from the Marines' explosives collapsed the tunnels. In the months and years that passed, buried human bones were discovered in the rock as American units rotated in and out of the outpost. And the destruction of Corporal Kelly's discovery in 2008 morphed into part of its mystique. An American missile had struck the outpost before the Marines had seized it. The Americans would later say burying Taliban fighters inside. But the bones were almost certainly not Taliban. They were decades and likely in some cases centuries old. A local scholar in Garsmir who spoke on the condition of anonymity out of fear of retribution said the hill had originally been a fort but that hundreds of years ago, its use changed. Local people, he said, and eventually ethnic Pashtuns, saw it and the other structures like it in the area as spiritual sites and transformed them into burial sites. In the years before the 1740s, before Pashtuns had made their way to Kashmir, is when the fort Observation Post Rock's foundation is thought to have been built according to local officials and residents. Who built it is unclear, but the Safavid, Mughal, and Ghaznavid empires, as well as Alexander the Great, all left their mark on the region. Residents of the area sometimes call these mounds, there are several in the district, a vestige of Maliko Tawafi, an Arabic phrase also used in Persian, that describes a governing system where each tribe is led by a local king or elder. The rock's last likely use as a graveyard 
may have been around 1980, at the start of the Soviet-Afghan War, the local scholar said, when fighters, some led by the insurgent commander Nassim Akhundzada, surrounded and captured roughly 40 Afghan communist police officers near Amir Aga. Mr. Akhundzada is infamous for legalizing poppy cultivation for the area in 1981, now the primary driver of Helmand's economy. His nephew, Sher Mohammed Akhundzada, was the governor of Helmand province from 2001 to 2005 and was removed after international forces raided his compound and found opium there. The captured communist police, the scholar said, were taken to the top of what became known as the Rock. Mr. Akhundzada's men and other local insurgents executed all of them. The dead were buried in the mound. Though family members came and disinterred some of the bodies, many remained entombed within the elevated earth. Local officials dispute this event, saying Mr. Akunzada was not in Garsmir when the communists were present. It would only take a few months after the rock's construction in 2008 when the Marines left and British troops took their place, only to be replaced by Marines again that it would come to be known as the haunted outpost. Is it a conduit for paranormal activity, said Jose Herrera, then a Lance Corporal and one of the Marines that had spent time at the Rock in 2009. When he was there, Mr. Herrera said he saw mysterious lights, heard strange static on the radio, and had the creeping feeling, much like several Marines who had spent time there, that someone or something was watching them. Locals would often tell the Marines on the rock that the area was haunted. The smells were like something was dying, said Corporal Herrera, who has since left the Marine Corps. It was really bad at night, and it was like it came in whiffs or gusts. Tom Coughlin, a former journalist for the London Times, wrote about a group of Marines at the rock in the summer of 2009 battling much of the same seemingly paranormal issues described by Mr. Herrera. Drastic changes in temperature from hot to cold, lights and voices in the night. In 2015, the Sci-Fi Television Channel aired an episode on their Paranormal Witness, True Terror series about the outpost, titled Beneath the Rock. The show featured the same Marines Mr. Coughlin had interviewed in 2009. It first seemed like stress-induced hokum, Mr. Coughlin said, of the Marines in a recent interview. His subjects had endured the blistering heat of the Afghan summer. Friends killed at the height of the fighting, and long rotations staring out into the night from the sandbag confines of the rock, waiting for an attack. But the Marines, he said, had told him there were some things they just couldn't explain despite their acute awareness of the anxiety that comes with combat. One Marine, Mr. Coughlin said, had sworn he had heard Russian voices whispering in the darkness. A squad that replaced the Marines who had been interviewed by Mr. Coughlin was warned by them that the outpost was haunted. A corporal who was part of the replacement squad, Dutch Perkins, said no one believed them. But it wasn't long after that Mr. Perkins heard some detached voice speaking in what he described as Russian while he stood guard at his lone machine gun position from midnight to dawn. Just thinking about it makes my hair stand up on my arm, Mr. Perkins said. It was real faint at first, but eventually sounded like someone was standing post with me. To the Marines and British who passed through, the sparse evidence of the Russians ever being around Amir Aga were the rusted hulks of two Soviet armored personnel carriers several hundred meters to the east. They had been destroyed in 1982 in what was the Soviet Union's first and failed offensive into Garsmir. The bloody battle was outlined in the book War Comes to Garsmir as the Soviet's most famous sweep in the district. The book said Amir Aga with its shrines and expansive villages was a symbol for the resistance and a regular meeting place. 
Abdul Ghani, a longtime resident of Garshmir, said the entire area was considered holy after the battle. When the Soviet armored columns approached the Amir Aga shrine, the tanks became stuck in the mud. He added that a Soviet rocket or bomb hit the shrine but did not explode, attributing this to a divine intervention from Amir Aga, a revered descendant of Muhammad who settled in the area hundreds of years ago. Afghans have long seen shrines as conduits for miracles, from physical health to history-altering events. Several tanks went into the earth and disappeared, Mr. Ghani said, adding that the ground around Amir Aga and the rock is still considered heavy and fearful after dozens died there. The area is full of dead bodies and haunted, he said. And that is the end of this article. So this was a kind of a, an interesting little article here. Basically, they're talking about this outpost that at one time was like a shrine or a, a tomb or something over in Afghanistan that the Marines made into an outpost. And they have reports from several different Marines as well as the British soldiers that were there that the place is haunted. Now, they talk about hearing voices, uh, seeing lights, and it feeling like somebody was there with them, all those kind of things. Are they also talking there about tanks disappearing and stuff like that into the mud? That's kind of interesting. Not a ton of like super spooky, dangerous stuff from what we're used to hearing about. But this one is interesting to me because here you have Marines and you have British soldiers as well saying that this place is haunted and they've had paranormal activity there. And that is a pretty good witness, if you ask me. Now, one thing I didn't like about the article was how they talked about they thought that the Marines were basically hallucinating this stuff in, in the beginning because of stress and, and PTSD and stuff. And I, I don't like that part of the article that much because American soldiers are very well trained. They train for battle. They simulate battle all the time. Yes, you do have soldiers that come back with PTSD. That's 100% true. And yes, war is absolutely hell. But the majority of war, the majority of the time, is boring. You're kind of sitting around waiting for something to happen. When the fighting does happen, it's fast, it's furious, and it is chaotic, and it's scary. But that's not the norm. That is the exception. In most cases, you're standing around waiting for something to happen. Most of your days are, are fairly boring in the average war situation. So I wouldn't say that these Marines were hallucinating this or that it was just stress because they were scared or whatever. Because, as I said the American military is very well trained and the Marines are probably the best trained out of the whole bunch as a, as a rule. Now you have special forces troops, you have army Rangers, you have Navy SEALs. You do have the special forces that are a step above the normal training and they are bona fide badasses, 100%. But your average infantry Marine, is one of the baddest dudes on the planet, plain and simple. They are the baddest of the regular armed services in the United States. So I would not say that, that a Marine would be making up paranormal activity, hearing bump in the night and stuff like that because he was scared or because he was under stress or whatever like that. I, I don't buy that at all. If there was ever a reliable witness that could be counted on to remain cool under pressure and to be able to tell you what he saw or heard and report that back, it would be a United States Marine. So I take exception to that part of the article. But other than that, it was a fairly interesting article. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. As always, it's completely up to you to decide. And I will catch you on the next one. Until I speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.